For all passages, I start out with the big question, why are you telling me this? Armin, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. Uh, last week, we did a little intro about who you are, what you're all about, how you're an MCAT wizard, uh, a self-taught MCAT wizard, spending all those months in your parents' basement. And uh, this week, we're going to continue on with Blueprint Full Length 1. What do you say about that? That sounds great. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you for having me again, Ryan. And yeah, let's jump into this. All right. You got big shoes to fill, so hopefully uh, we we can we can uh, teach those students just as well, if not better than than that Phil guy. We we don't even know him anymore. So uh, uh, <laughs> Phil was <a> genius. <laughs> Phil was Phil is a genius. Good. Yes, uh, I love Phil. Um, all right, so we're gonna jump in to passage eight of Cars um, in blueprint full length one if you want to follow along you can get full length one for free by going to blueprintprep.com and signing up for all of those free goodies you get a half length diagnostic you get the full length one for free and uh, now you can follow along with us and see how you do so what uh, what do we need to know about full length uh, or passage eight here for full length one anything special passage eight definitely has a new themes um I would have to say the first paragraph kind of makes you think about 2020. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> um, the it's it's very interesting, and and the idea is to keep your opinions out of it. Um, there's a lot of different perspectives. You want to stay engaged, so definitely be asking yourself questions while you're reading this uh, passage. But uh, keep your opinions out of it. Just 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 make sure that you follow in line with what the author is trying to conclude. So when when you say ask questions. So questions like, why the heck am I torturing myself with this? Oh my gosh, the MCAT is horrible. Why do I want to go through this? No, not questions like that, right? No, no. <laughs> like, So I first, for all passages, I start out with the big question, why are you telling me this? Mm. Remember, all of these passages are published pieces of work. Uh, these were not written specifically for the MCAT. Uh, somebody on their own free time went and wrote this pa- wrote this passage or wrote a piece of you know writing, and it got published. And with mm. the intention of somebody, you know, an audience with with their own free will, picking this up and reading it. Yeah. And and you're not saying like the ones that we're reading for blueprints full length exams, but you're saying the MCAT as well on the real MCAT, the the quote unquote question writers aren't writing passages. They're pulling published works. Correct. Yeah. Yes. All of these passages are published pieces of work. Yeah. Got it. OK. Yeah. So. Whenever you're reading this, why did the author write this? What mm. was the main point? Why did the author, you know, use time in their life to 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 write this? What yeah. what was the main point, the goal? And then as we could go further, we could kind of dive more into these questions to ask. Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in to uh, passage eight here. Cool. All right. So Public health has classically been associated with sanitation and the spread of communicable diseases. <laughs> oh, I'm <Lord>. like 2020. <laughs> right. So, so uh, keep your opinions out of it, right? So, but we're talking about public health. Near the turn of the 20th century, it also focused much of its efforts on lifestyle factors that were associated with disease and disability, e.g. diet, smoking, exercise. All right, so we had this idea of public health, what it was initially, how it has grown or maybe expanded, so keep that in mind. Yet, despite this, an author using a kind of a you know transition word here to to tell us yeah despite this what ha- has grown I'm I'm about to inject my my um, you know thoughts in here many of the largest impacts of public health have been related to physical and industrial factors okay how so one of the most potent examples is the presence of lead as an additive in gasoline in the form of tetraethyl lead or TEL used to increase both fuel economy and vehicle performance. 
Okay, interesting. This is something brand new, um, like most cars passages, but definitely maybe we can anticipate that this is going to be a pivoting point or something that the author is going to refer more about. While ethanol was already known to have similar effects, the relatively inexpensive and have low toxicity, TEL was widely promoted beginning in the 1920s as it was especially profitable for patent holders. So, this is definitely a very interesting paragraph. Uh, Ryan, what, what would you say that the, um, this paragraph, the author, you know, summing up this paragraph, what would you say the author's main point was? Um, to talk about public health <laughs> and uh, kind of get, give us a little bit of a primer of, of public health. Um, and and it, it's interesting. It started with the initial discussion of what most people would think about public health wise diet, smoking, exercise, but then switching over to this lead as a fuel additive and and its impact on public health. Although we don't know what its impact is yet, the, the author's just introducing us to it. Um, but it, it, I would say that the author sounds potentially pretty biased because that last sentence, right? It was, it was especially profitable for patent holders as this, like, here's why we're pushing it. Yeah. Agreed. The, the author can, you can already tell the author has some type of negative bias going into this uh, paragraph about TEL. So once, once you read a paragraph, ask yourself, what was the main idea? And then what can you highlight uh, in this first paragraph that, that truly identifies, you know, that sums up the main idea within this first paragraph. So in here, what I would normally highlight is public health, you know, classically sanitation of communicable diseases. Um, you know, expanding onto lifestyle factors. Um, yet, despite this, is pretty strong in talking about the largest impacts of public health being related to physical and industrial factors. And uh, specifically talking about lead as an additive in gasoline in the form of tetraethyl lead. So, um, that would be the main ideas that I would probably highlight in here. We don't really want to take notes um, on the uh, car section, it, it, unless it's a very difficult passage. So we kind of want to use the highlighting technique to some, to create our own mental map. Okay. And this pretty much sums it up. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the second uh, paragraph. Lead, even at very low levels that had previously been considered safe, is toxic to many organ systems in the body. Given TEL's ability to cross the placenta and the blood-brain barrier, it is especially damaging to the developing fetus and to young children. Already tell, the author does not like TEL. Mm. Lead exposure at almost any level to the developing fetus can result in diminished intelligence and disruption of later behaviors. With the brain's low to non-existent regenerative capacities, these deficits are lifelong. So what's the main idea here? Lead is bad. <laughs> yeah, lead is bad. I'd probably highlight in here, lead, toxic to many organ systems. And specifically, the author goes and tells us a mechanism of why it's, why it's specifically um, uh, toxic to these organ systems. Is, is it because it just you know smells bad? What is it? What does it do? Does it kill cells? It crosses the, the placenta and the blood-brain barrier, and uh, it can result in this diminished intelligence and disruption of later behaviors for the developing fetus. Yes. So that would be pretty much the 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 main idea of this second paragraph i wonder if that's what's wrong with the boomer population right all this lead <laughs> just kidding <laughs> oh, um, that's funny all right so um let's go on to the third paragraph as it was known as far back as the 19th century that lead was a dangerous substance and as the very first factory producing TEL killed 17 workers due to massive neurotoxicity almost immediately after it began operating, it seems somewhat surprising that lead was ever permitted to enter widespread use as a fuel additive. So the author is mind blown, <laughs> right? <laughs> like this is obviously very dangerous and here's the evidence. Um, in a story that has been repeated over and over again, was a massive lobbying effort by the 
led industry, along with decades of funding junk science that convinced legislators and the public to accept that leaded gasoline was safe. It wasn't until 1976 that the U.S. government even began to suggest phasing out TEL and gasoline. After a decade of lawsuits in which various industries sought to block the provisions of the Clean Air Act, the government was able to force industries to phase out leaded gasoline. So what was the main point here? (laughs) Uh, The main point here was to talk about um, uh, that we knew lead was dangerous and yet we still pushed it. Um, and, and it's kind of tying back into that first paragraph where I pointed out the uh, the especially profitable for patent holders, right? We, we talked about here massive lobbying efforts, junk science, um, really pushing for this. Yeah, I agree. So I, we would probably highlight that. So it was known as far back as the 19th century that lead was a dangerous uh, substance. And I, well, then why why was it still, you know, going on here? Why, 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 why did this continue? Well, it continued because of the massive lobbying effort by the lead industry. (laughs) Gotta love capitalism. (laughs) (laughs) So massive lobbying effort along with funding junk science, you know, talking about all that. So the author is definitely injecting uh, their own ideas in here. Yep. Okay. So let's move on to the next paragraph. So in One of the more remarkable cases of the government's ability to rein in industry's misdeeds, the phase out of leaded gasoline coincided with an 80% decrease in the blood lead levels of children from 1976 to 1992, which also correlated with a six point gain in the average IQ score, according to Dr. Landrigan's research. Okay, so interesting. So the author is mentioning that we removed, uh, the government removed lead from gasoline, and this correlated with 80% decrease in blood lead levels of children, which also correlated with a six-point gain in the average IQ score, according to this uh, person's research. Interesting. Correlations are important and something that we probably want to keep track of. This improvement cannot all be attributed to unleaded gasoline, of course. For much of the early and mid-20th century, lead was found in any number of products, including paint, solar, used in plumbing systems, and various types of plastics. The lead phase-out in these products coincided with the reduction of TEL as a gasoline additive. So Dr. Landergan's six IQ, six IQ points may well be attributed to a drop in lead levels in our blood from all sources rather than gasoline. So here's the author re- refuting that earlier statement, saying that it wasn't just the lead a decrease the removal of lead from gasoline that led to you know the six point gain in average IQ score for children. It could have actually been attributed that we were at the same time removing lead from many different sources. And the author goes by and 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 gives evidence for you know for example paint you know solder used in plumbing systems and so, various. So I'm going to correct you because you're going to get roasted on this one. That's solder, not solder. Solder. I'm solder. sorry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. It's one of those weird words. If you've never heard it said, you're like, that doesn't look like solder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I this this reminds me of. Uh, uh, I will get into it later. You know, uh, I can't pronounce some words because I studied at home from medical school. I didn't go to class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, those those uh, pharmaceutical words are really hard. <laughs> Like lymph adenopathy, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I said that in, in clinic, and they're like, lymph adenopathy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Um, so what was the main idea of this of this paragraph? Uh, to, to really show that removing lead has had uh, – is, is correlated with, with some good improvements in uh, blood levels, IQ scores, and that – lead wasn't just removed from gas but lots of things yeah yeah and 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 this 
removal of lead from many different things, like you mentioned, has led to the six IQ points. So I'd probably highlight in here that, you know, uh, the government's, uh, you know, removing uh, leaded gasoline, uh, six point increase in the average IQ score, but also lead was found in multiple different products. And the I increase in IQ points uh, could be attributable to a drop in lead in all of our blood from all sources. Yep. And finally, the last paragraph. The dominance of the car culture in the U.S. makes it unsurprising that improvements to the automotive safety has a major positive impact on the death and disability rates in the country. While fuel makers were being pushed to eliminate lead additives, car manufacturers were facing legislators who began requiring the installation and then use of seatbelts. Okay, interesting. We're kind of taking a scope shift here. Now we're talking about lead to, you know, um, automotive safety and, and specifically talking about seatbelts. Does this correlate anything within the passage? <laughs> uh, nothing that we've been talking about other than government and, and what they're doing. Yeah, definitely nothing about lead in specific, but could this probably fall under the idea of public health? Mm -hmm. Yep. Po possibly. Studies done by the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration suggest that a typical lap and shoulder seatbelt reduces the risk of death by almost 50% in crashes of all types. Okay. Beginning with New York in 1984, all states, with the exception of New Hampshire, have, have, <laughs> <Live> passed, <free. laughs> laws, <laughs> have passed laws requiring drivers to wear seatbelts while driving. In just the decade from 91 to 2001, the NHTSA data reflects that over 100,000 lives have been saved due to seatbelt use. Interesting. So what do you think is the main point in this, for, in this last paragraph? Um, so going back to, to your point about public health, right, just other public health measures, specifically around the automotive industry that has saved lives. Yeah, agreed. So in here, we'll probably highlight, you know, improvements in automotive safety has had a major positive impact. Uh, one example of this, uh, and besides just removing lead from uh, gasoline is going to be, um, you know, legislators requiring the use of seatbelts and that the NHTSA um, uh, has data that it, a lot of lives have been saved. I like that. Cool. So at the end of the passage, you know, this was a passage that we were, that was pretty linear. We were able to read um, a paragraph, revise it, and see how the next paragraph kind of fit into the previous paragraphs. And this last paragraph, while it was different than lead, it focused more on automotive safety and also the public health. So um, now we, at the end of each passage, we want to take a second to reflect back and, and why did the author waste their life, you know, <laughs> writing this passage? What, what was the main point? Uh, so for me, the main point is to highlight um, just public health measures and its impact on our, our community, our, our country. I, I like that. Absolutely. And specifically, let's go a little bit more, more deeper in scope. Uh, specifically, public health in terms of vaccines and, and communicable diseases? Or was it in an, another aspect? What would you say that aspect was? Oh, the, the fuel obviously was lead-based, but fuel around the automotive industry. And then that last sentence as well, or last paragraph around automotive industry uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Public health kind of being, uh, you know, being focused on um, this bigger fi industrial factors and, and, and more, um, yeah, absolutely, 100%, 100%. So once we do that, once we read a, a, a passage, we, we reflect back on the main idea, and I think we're ready to go into the questions. Cool. So before, you know, before going into the questions, read a question, then stop, reword it, and then um, try to solve it on, your, on, on our own. So let's take a moment to read question number 42. And um, let's let's reword this. So the question is the author's attitude towards the lead industry's efforts to get TEL included as a gasoline additive can be described as. So we're going to take a step back and reword this into our own words. How would you reword this, Ryan? Uh, so 
the the question is basically asking what does the author think about the the the, the shady business of of corporate lobbying <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yep 100 percent. right so what is the author's what is what does the author think about the shady business of corporate lobbying so <laughs> we can reflect back to the passage to kind of uh um make a very concise prediction. Um, if we were out running out of time, we would probably, you know, not reflect back to the passage, come up with a prediction. But since we have time here, let's go back to the passage. So where do we want to refer back to where the author mentioned about lobbying? That was in the second passage there, I think, or second paragraph here. So, or third Third, um, yes. Yeah, so the massive lob lobbying effort by the lead industry, along with decades of funding junk science. So the um, the lead industry funding junk science. Yeah, what is what is the author's attitude towards this? What, what kind of words does the author use to describe this massive lobbying effort? Um... I don't see any specific words standing let's, here. Let's let me let me ask you another question. Yeah. Is this insane or or oh, is yes. this <laughs> the author's words? Yeah, not not written. Yeah, the the author <laughs> thinks it's ridiculous. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I agree. It is definitely has a negative connotation to it. Let's let's look back at the beginning of the paragraph. He, he the author mentions you know the the TEL factory killing seventeen workers due to massive neurotoxicity, and then kind of follows up with that in a story that has been repeated over and over again. So what is the author's attitude? Is that you know like oh my god this is insane this is unfound for or you know, I'm, you know, this is expected, like, come on guys. Yeah. Yeah. What that, would you say? Definitely expected. And, uh, just, uh, it, it sounds like the the author is, is tired of it. Yeah. So that's our prediction. The author is tired of this happening. So we're going to go into the answer choices armed with the prediction that the author is sick and tired of this continuously happening. Yep. What answer choice would match this? Um, so we have answer choice A, unsurprised that an industry would risk people's health for the sake of profit. B, horrified that any company or group of companies would risk people's health for the sake of profit. C, regretful that the author personally profited from the inclusion of TEL as a gas gasoline additive. Or D, angry that scientists were willing to take money from the lead industry to publish junk science that, quote, proved that TEL was safe as a gasoline additive. Um, all right, so when I read those, like a lot of them sound like, oh, that could be it, right? Even that last one, yeah. angry that scientists were willing to take money from the lead industry to publish junk science. Because that, wor that specific wording is in there, right? Junk science. Um, the, the thing that throws it off for me, uh, was this quote unquote proved that TEL was safe. The, the article doesn't say that the, the, uh, this passage says that it convinced legislators that, um, that they should accept it as safe, but it didn't necessarily say it proved that, yeah. uh, that the gasoline was safe. And the, the author didn't necessarily attack the scientists, just the, the lobbying mm -hmm. behind it and funding the junk science. So I'm going to throw out D as, uh, as, a, as a distraction. Uh, C, regretful that the author personally profited. The author didn't say anything. Uh, <laughs> no. al although today's day and age, they need to uh, <laughs> talk about any sort of conflicts of interest. Um, so unsurprised that an industry would risk people's health for the sake of profit. So that's an interesting one because, right, that, that wording here mm -hmm. been repeated over and over again. Um, so that's uh, kind of an interesting one for me. Uh, or be horrified that any company or group of companies would risk people's health for the sake of profit. Um, so A and B to me are very, very similar uh answers here and the the thing that stands out to me is with b saying horrified that any company or group of companies would risk people's life i don't know if the author ever got into that sort of language or kind of idea but that unsurprised definitely seemed 
to be something yeah. the author came came across. Yeah, absolutely. And and whenever you're here, whenever you eliminate two answer choices and you're remaining with two, just go back and reflect back on your prediction. And the prediction here was the author is sick and tired of this happening, just continuously happening. So are we unsurprised or are we horrified? I don't know. The way you ask we, that, I think it should be horrified. <laughs> Remember, we're sick and tired of this repeating over and over again. This is nothing new, yeah. right? So here, it would it would definitely be unsurprised, right? So that an industry would risk people's health for the sake of profit. Again, you know, lobbying. How could they do this? They just they just continuously do this. Yeah. So A would be the correct answer. Yeah, I I think B. I think we could assume that, but I don't think the the author ever kind of gave us that idea. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely sad, and maybe initially, but at this point in time, the author's attitude is is come on, guys, you know, it's over <laughs> and over again. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Sh- shall we go on to the next one? Yeah, so question 43, the passage implies that which of the following facts demonstrate an unqualified success for public health in America? A, every state has passed laws requiring drivers to wear seatbelts while driving. I can automatically cross that out because uh, thank you, New Hampshire, live free or die. <coughs> B, ethanol is now commonly used as a ga- gasoline additive. C, government agencies such as NHTSA are empowered to investigate and punish those failing to meet public health standards or D reduction in blood lead levels due to removal of lead from products has led to an IQ increase. All right. So reframing the question, the passage implies that which of the following facts demonstrates an unqualified success for public health. So the, the, the question is asking like, what what is an example of um, public health success? Yeah, absolutely. What is an example of public health success? So let's take a minute and predict this question. So what what would you say, pretty author? What was very successful that we did? Uh, definitely removing lead, uh, mm-hmm. and they gave he gave or she gave specific examples of what that led to. <laughs> no, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With the decrease in lead levels, the increase in IQ. Uh, yeah. They also gave the example of seatbelts uh, with the 100,000 lives saved from, from seatbelts. So a right. couple of examples there potentially to lean on. Good. I like, I like both of those predictions. So let's keep those in mind. So removing lead from products and possibly you know having seatbelts uh, uh, being required in Almost all states, not every state. Yep. Um, so keeping those in mind, what else can we cross out? Or what can we pick? What matches your prediction? Yeah, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross out B because I don't think this answers the question specifically. Um, right? Ethanol is now commonly used as a gasoline additive. I don't care if they used uh, sugar, right? It's just <laughs> like pure, pure sugar. It's really doesn't matter what is now being used as an additive the fact is they're not using lead so i think that's a distraction answer um c is interesting because the nhtsa actually um is mentioned and so it's like oh they talked about nhtsa so i'm gonna uh, the the national highway transportation safety agency or administration um i'm gonna uh I'm going to talk about that because they they specifically mentioned that. But the um, the NHTSA they don't specifically mention how they're empowered to investigate and punish. They just are doing studies. So okay. I'm going to cross out C because of that, and that just by process of elimination leaves us with D, which makes sense, right? Reduction in yeah. lead has led to an increase in IQ. Yep. And that was one of your predictions, right? So removing lead from products led to an increase in IQ levels. Perfect. All right. I like when they're straightforward. So let's go on to number 44. Which of the following chemicals, if toxic, would be most harmful given the information in the passage? So before we jump into the answer choices, we have a prediction. 
what do you believe the author believes is toxic? Don't look at any of the answer choices. Mm. So the author in paragraph two, I believe it was, um, talked about the the effects of lead. Um, toxic to many organs, crossing the placenta and the blood-brain barrier. Perfect. And damaging to the fetus. So I'm going to look for something maybe that has similar properties. Perfect. I like that. So let's go into the answer choices. Answer choice A, chemical Q, a gray liquid, which can easily pass through biological membranes and organs and is rapidly absorbed by the skin. Answer choice B, chemical X, which is impermeable to biological membranes, is a gas in its usual form and when inhaled can damage the lungs. Answer choice C, chemical T, a contaminant often found in food, which has been known to weaken bones in the elderly, making them more likely to be injured in a car crash. Or answer choice D, chemical Z, a byproduct of plastic manufacturing, which damages the liver, but is unable to penetrate into nerve tissue or the brain. Which one of those answer choices matched your prediction? Answer choice A, chemical Q. Bingo. We would pick it on test day and move on. Move on. I like it. <laughs> Quick and easy. Question 45. Which of the following, if true, would most weaken one of the arguments presented in the passage? So this one yeah. seems hard to potentially predict because we don't know, right? There's one yeah. of the arguments. There's lots of arguments. Um, <laughs> and so we potentially have to read the answers to see. Agreed. Agreed. You definitely cannot predict this one, but be ready to evaluate each answer choice, determine whether it, it weakens the author's argument or not. And, and let's keep moving. Let's, let's go through and evaluating each of them. All right. So answer choice A, in the late 1990s, the use of activated charcoal as an effective uh, chelating agent to remove heavy metals from the digestive tract gained widespread popularity. B... Beginning in the mid-1970s, the federal government significantly increased investment in public education to improve children's reading, reasoning, and math skills. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Uh, seatbelt, so answer choice C, seatbelt installation had been voluntarily adopted by almost all car, car manufacturers by the mid-1970s. Or D, in the 1800s, the knowledge that lead was a dangerous substance was limited to a relatively small number of people working in the then new field of public sanitation. Whew. So let's start with answer choice A. Yeah. So um, in the late 1990s, the use of activated charcoal as an active key chelating agent to remove heavy metals from the digestive tract gained widespread popularity. Does that weaken any of the author's arguments? Um... No, because this is in the late 1990s, and the argument was that lead was being removed, and this decrease in blood level, blood lead levels happened from 76 to 92. Yeah, absolutely. It's beyond this, you know, our timeline, right? Yeah. Uh, from 76 to 92, we removed lead. This is happening in the late 1990s. It doesn't really affect the author's arguments, so we could definitely go ahead and cross that out. Yeah. Let's just reflect back on the author's arguments. The author's arguments are lead is dangerous. You know, people are, or Congresses or there's lobbyists that are out for profit, and we removed lead, and we saw an improvement in uh, the the. IQ and 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 the uh, of of individuals and um, we installed seat belts and um, people were were using seat by use by requiring drivers to wear seat belts um, we have saved many lives mm. so let's just keep those in mind as we go on to the next answer choice yeah so answer choice B beginning in the mid 1970s which kind of goes back to that 76 to 92 time frame I just mentioned the federal government significantly increased investment in public education to improve children's reading reasoning and math skills so hmm so the author here one of the arguments is blood levels went down and it correlated with this increase in IQ and mm -hmm. this potentially says well wait a minute there's another reason why IQ went up. It's not the lead decrease. Bingo. Could this possibly weaken the author's argument? Yep. Yeah, yeah. But we're not going to pick it because this is a, <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't, we're not going to cross it out, but we're going <laughs> to 
you were not going to pick it unless you were running out of time. Yes. Right. If you were running out of time, you pick it, move on. But in have time. This one's a tricky question because it says most weekends. So you're like, darn it, that's right. But maybe there's a better one. I, yeah. I hate these most ones. All yeah. right. So we, we like we like that one. Um, okay. So answer choice C, seatbelt installation had been voluntarily adopted by almost all car manufacturers by the mid-1970s. I don't think that really weakens anything because it, it just talked about seatbelts saved lives. And really the argument was did the car manufacturers do it voluntarily or were they forced to by the, the um, national highway transportation uh, traffic safety administration? So, yeah. And, and, and the, the author is mentioning at the bottom, it's laws requiring drivers to wear seatbelts is yep. what safe lies. It's, you know, New Hampshire has you know, <laughs> seatbelts, but do they require drivers to wear seatbelts? Yep. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so we could probably cross that one out. And yep. finally, answer choice D. Um, in the 1800s, the knowledge that lead was a dangerous substance was limited to a relatively small number of people working in the then new field of public sanitation. So the author mentions that we knew since the uh, 19th century that lead was a dangerous subject or mm. the dangerous sub substance. Does does that does only a few people knowing about it weaken the author's argument that is you know, no, not not necessarily right. So here, by process of elimination, we could pick answer choice B, and click it and move on. Yeah, I like it. Click it and move on. <laughs> Those are my favorite ones. <laughs> sounds sounds good. Um, number forty six. As a passage describes it, which of the following would most directly fit the classical understanding of public health as a field was first developed? So let's stop here. Let's reword this. What did, what did this ask us? Um, which of the following would most directly fit the classical understanding of public health as the field was first developed? Uh, oh, so it's it's asking us for, um, like, for the field of public health, what potential following scenarios i'm assuming would be considered quote unquote public health in the classical sense yes. right cool so let's predict this what do you believe is going to be considered uh public health classically what does the author mention uh the the author mentions the the factors associated with lifestyle right disease and disability with lifestyle diet smoking exercise um, so oh, actually, pretty, at the very beginning, the first sentence, uh, obviously, yeah. classically has been associated with sanitation <laughs> and the spread of, of communicable yeah. disease. Yeah. And then yeah. expanded to yes. focus on lifestyle factors. So classically, it's just been sanitation and the spread of communicable diseases. So that's our prediction. We're looking for an answer choice that says sanitation or spread of communicable diseases. So let's go through the answer choices. So A. The safety and effectiveness of a vaccine for HPV in preventing not only HPV infection, but also the subsequent development of cervical cancer was a primary concern of several physician groups early in the 21st century. This kind of mentioned the spread of communicable diseases, possibly. Mm -hmm. Government officials warned about the risk of cocaine addiction and overuse as a stimulant as early as the 1880s. Nah. Communicable diseases? Nah, not really, right? Lifestyle factors. Yep. That's that one. Boards of physicians were routinely consulted about the dangers of radiation exposure when nuclear power plants were first being constructed in the mid 20th century. Communicable diseases and sanitations? Mm, more Sanitation, potentially, maybe if you wanted to stretch it, but. <laughs> Yeah, this is more industrial, right? Yeah. Physical and industrial factors. Cross yeah. that out. Yeah. And I, I like the sanitation play for that because of nuclear waste. I'm like, ooh, waste sanitation that way. Yeah. <laughs> but not in the classic sense of like I, uh, dirty water and, and like toilet water running <laughs> in the streets. Agreed. 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 Um, and lastly, answer choice D, doctors receive professional development training that encourages them to install and use ergonomically correct furniture in their own offices to reduce the incidence of repeated stress injuries at work. Man, mm, I need negative. one of those chairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so A is the correct answer. Yeah, so that's a pretty straightforward um, definition answer.
Yeah, agreed. I like those ones. All right, question 47, last one of the passage. Given the views described in the passage, the author would most likely be in favor of which of the following proposals? All right, so this is a kind of outside of the passage type question based on the author's arguments. What else potentially would they argue? Yeah, absolutely. And what 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 was the author's main idea so far? What were the, what was the author kind of arguing throughout the entire passage? It's really public health, right? Um, mm-hmm. Making sure that the the public is put first and not necessarily corporations' interests. Yeah, absolutely. Putting the interests of public health first and not the interests of corporations. So we're going to have that prediction as we go into the answer choices. Answer choice A, a federal administration proposes removing regulations on the grounds that they are burdensome and that those in the industry have the expertise needed to set voluntary guidelines to ensure the safety of the public and their workers. <laughs> that's laughable. Uh, so that's definitely not what the <laughs> the author or any brilliant person would, would assume. Uh, Uh, Answer choice B, a country passes a law which creates a universal ban on the use of lead in any product or industrial application at any level, even in cases in which the alternative is a chemical that is potentially more harmful. So this one is interesting, right? I I think the, I I think of the meme, the meme of the football player that's like, you, you, you fooled me, right? You had me in the first half or whatever. So, <laughs> right? The, the first half of this, I'm like, oh, yes, definitely. This is exactly it. And then if the student didn't read the rest, the, the, which proves this one wrong, in my mind, they, they potentially get trapped with that one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of B because of that last part. Um, answer choice C, a senator puts forth a draft of legislation calling a halt to any new patents being issued until more stringent safety regulations can be put in place, requiring new patent holders to demonstrate that their devices would not harm the public. All right, so this is um, ignoring what's good for the corporations for the better of the public. And so the answer choice C sounds really good. Uh, Answer choice D, a new piece of legislation empowers the relevant federal agencies to requisition funding to investigate potential junk science that is leading to negative impacts on public health. Potentially, right? D's like, yeah, maybe I could see that. But C is much more like, oh, it definitely. So as we're going through this and we eliminated A and B, before we pick an answer choice, let's reflect back on our prediction. And our prediction was that we want to put the public health interests first yep. over any corporation interests. Now, C is saying requiring new patent holders to demonstrate that their devices would not harm the public. Now, yes, TEL was, you know, lobbied because it was very profitable for patent holders. Can we generalize the patent holders for TEL, their behaviors to the rest of anything else's behavior, any other patent holders' behavior? Hmm. No, not necessarily. Yeah, right. So we can't, you know, any new patent holder, any like the patent for, um, I don't know, anything like non-public health related or anything could could just be stopped. And we have to prove that it's not harmful to the public. That's kind of a extreme answer choice. Would you agree? It is. Yeah, right. We we have to ask ourselves, does the author believe that all new patent holders should be stopped until they prove or is it specific patent holders? And uh, what else can you know, we, we have to we have to keep that in mind that this could be somewhat extreme. So now between C and D, which one would you say is the better answer choice? I still like C, but I think you're getting a D is the right answer. Uh, I don't know. I think the author is just so so uh, so done with crony capitalism. They're like everyone is bad. They're all evil, right? As they said, repeated over and over again. We can't <laughs> assume that the author is tired with capitalism, right? The yeah, author is tired with specific areas that capitalism has, you know, empowered or hasn't really stopped, but in all of capitalism as a whole, we can't really, you know, make that conclusion. So uh, patent holders, 
are, are definitely to any new patent holders would be more of an extreme answer. And specifically, we're looking for people to act in the best interest of public health. And that's, you know, stopping junk science. That's, that's junk science is something that led to TEL being used in gasoline. So if we stop that and legislator, legislators would be less likely to be swayed by pseudoscience and more likely to be swayed by actually what's important and what's beneficial for public health. All right. So I missed one on that one. Not bad. I'll take it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. I, th- I thought you did really well. <laughs> I like these straightforward ones. So hopefully the, the, the next passage is just as straightforward. <laughs> um, any, any other kind of key takeaways as we wrap this one up? I think, you know, one of the major things is as you're going throughout the passage, ask yourself these engaging questions to stay engaged. And you want to, you know, as, as you're reading this, why did the author say this? What was the author's meaning? What's going to come next, right? Uh, imagine this. You have dedicated your entire life to being a physician, right? That's, that's one narrow path. You going reading these cars passages allows you to explore other pathways that you probably would have taken on in another universe. So here's your opportunity. So instead of seeing it as be something boring, like ah, oh, here we go. It's like oh, cool. Let's talk a little bit about public health and specifically about lobbying and 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 removing and doing what's best for 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 society and and not for what's profit 